Howdy guys, Nation Nerd here. So, we're in this dried up creek bed, and I have some very special thing for you today. We're gonna be comparing and contrasting two very famous snakes here in Texas. So, let's get to it. All right, so our first species today is the Copperhead, or Kishadon Contortrix. So these guys are in the genus of Kishadon, which basically just includes Copperheads and Cottonmouths. And uh, they are found in Eastern North America. So, these guys are one of the famous venomous snakes of the U.S. And if you want a closer look. So while they are venomous, they are actually not as venomous as everyone believes. You don't want to get bitten by anything, obviously. Hi. Ooh, you yawned. You yawned. So, we'll go over that real quick. So whenever a snake yawns, are you going to do it again? Whenever a snake yawns, they are... Ooh, did you get it? You got it. They are uh, realigning their jaw. This is because they can actually dislocate their jaw to take larger amounts of prey. And sometimes it gets misaligned and so they have to realign it. And that's what we just saw. Kind of cool. Wasn't expecting it. Back to the main topic. Their main diet consists of rodents and other animals that people don't like. However, as juveniles, nope. There we go. As juveniles, they'll even eat cicadas, which are the very loud bugs that you hear in the trees certain times of the year. And one thing you can see that tells you 100% that's a juvenile is this little yellow tail right here, this yellow green tail. Both copperheads and cottonmouths have them, and they're called a caudal lure. And that means that uh, the snake will kind of wiggle it slowly back and forth, and it'll look like a worm or something that something else wants to eat. And so it'll come and it'll try to eat the worm, and then the copperhead will eat that, like if a mouse came and tried to eat the worm. So it's a pretty cool way uh, for them to find prey whenever they're young. So our other species that we're gonna be looking at is the northern cottonmouth, Echistron piscivorous, which means fish eater. Oh, you're gonna ride the hook, that's nice of you. So these guys are also in eastern North America. And, excuse me. What you doing there? Woo. So these snakes are also part of a Kishadon with the copperheads. Um, that's just for the nerds out there though. It's not needed knowledge. And they are famous for the cotton mouth or their, uh, whenever they gape, they have a white mouth. And that gaping is saying, hey, back off. I want to mess with you, type thing. So, one thing that many people don't know is that cotton mouths and water moccasins are the same thing. There's no difference, it's just different names for the same snake. They're both Echistron Piscivorous. And you see right here, she's being super sweet. And she just wants to say hi. She's gonna come up and say hi now. Yeah. Alright, so these are mostly fish eaters. So some identifying features of the copperhead are they are in the viper family or vipera. And so they do have that uh, triangular head. However, don't fall. Don't fall. However, a lot of snakes such as water snakes can flatten out their heads and make them to appear like this. To say, hey, I'm big and bad, you go away. Alright? Another thing is if you look, he has elliptical pupils. But guess what? They can dilate their pupils just like we can. Alright? So, really, those are both not good ways to identify the snake. The only really good way is to see they have a ridge over their eye. And it's much more pronounced than the cotton mouse, which we will look at in a second. Alright, another identifying feature 
is Copperheads have Hershey Kisses or Broadbands, depending on your locale. And as you can see here, this is kind of a mix between both, honestly. It's more Broadbands than uh, the Hershey Kisses, but they'll have this coloration more or less. They can be more red, they can be more tan and brown. Um, and they get misconstrued and misidentified often uh, mixed with other things that have similar patterns such as some types of water snakes but really if you just look at a few different pictures you'll always be able to identify a copperhead they're pretty easy and then one final thing is juveniles have this uh, yellow tail right here oh, I know I pissed you off didn't I they have that yellow tail and as I talked about earlier that's the caudal lure that is a 100% easy way to tell if it is at least a copperhead or a cottonmouth. But only for juveniles. Alright, I'm going to put him up and then we'll get the cottonmouth and we will compare and look at that one. Alright, All right. so now the identifying features of the cottonmouth. So first off, they have this ridge above their eye right there, if you can see it. And if you look at them from above, you can't actually see their eyes. Whereas if you look at a water snake from above, like so, you can easily see their eyes. That's a big identifying factor if you're standing over the snake. Um, another thing is if you can see, if she stops moving so much, please stop moving. There is a dark line that runs um, horizontal with her eye. And that is characteristic of cotton mouths. And no other snake in the US really has that. So that's a good identifying feature. And then they have very similar bands to the copperheads, except theirs are pixelated, as you can see. And when they're juvenile, they're very brightly colored, and they look almost exactly like a juvenile copperhead, um, apart from the pixelation of the bands versus the smooth bands, which you can see right there. These snakes as juveniles also have that caudal lure tail, the green and yellow tail. However, this one is a little bit older and so therefore has lost that, but you can see her tail right there. So, another identifying feature of a cotton mouth, if you really piss it off, it will gape its mouth uh, telling you to back off and it has a very white mouth, hence the name cotton mouth. So if I can piss her off enough to gape, hey. But, of course, she's a very calm snake, and she's probably not going to gape at me, so I will put a picture of it and... Let's see, is she going to gape? No, she's not gaping. She's a very, very calm snake, as you can see. So, the biggest myth around cottonmouths as a whole is that they chase people. They will chase you, and they will hunt you down, and they will bite you, and they will eat your family is what I hear all the time. Well, my cousin got chased, but no, they didn't. Prove it to you. I'm gonna sit down here, right next to this cotton mill. Me and him are gonna be best bros. And look, he's not coming after me. We're just chilling. He really doesn't, doesn't want anything to do with me. All right, are you gonna come closer? I don't know why she isn't chasing me, guys. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Now, they're actually very calm snakes. There was a study that I will link to. Um, I don't remember the author of said study off the top of my head, but I will definitely credit him in the description. Uh, they used fake hands and fake legs to step on the copper cotton mouth to harass the cotton mouth with the hands and then just like they had a hand next to the cotton mouth and the cotton mouth bit like something like 30% of the uh, legs that stepped on them and somewhere around 40 or 50% of the hands that harassed them and 0% of the hands that were next to them. 
So, like I said, those numbers aren't 100%. I will correct them and put that in the description along with a link to the study. It's a very uh, well-written study and it's very interesting. All right, so, as always, I should have said this earlier, but never ever play with a snake that you don't know what it is. Don't play with venomous snakes unless you know what you're doing. And uh, you never really have to mess with any snake if you don't want to. You can just walk away from it. Or if it's in your yard, just spray it with a water hose. Or call someone like me to relocate it. Uh, most of us do it for free. So this has been Copperheads and Cottonmouths. And comparing and contrasting the two of them. As they are very similar snakes. And they're both fairly common in the southern eastern U.S., southeastern U.S. So as you can see, they're beautiful snakes. I love their belly pattern. So this has been The Nature Nerd. I hope you all enjoyed and stick around for more and more videos where we look at nature and we bring it to you. So this is a snake that, you know, not everybody sees, especially all y'all city slickers, but that is really beautiful and underappreciated. All right, have a good one. I'll see y'all around.